Coming up on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, a claustrophobic Florida cave dive. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. Florida has a well-deserved reputation for sun, sand, and ocean. But North Florida is known in the scuba diving community as a top cave diving destination, cave country. Most North Americans learn to cave dive here in Florida, cave country. Then once they're certified, they go out around the world having more cave diving adventures to places like the Bahamas and the Yucatan. But I did it backwards. I learned to cave dive in the Bahamas and I've never even seen a Florida cave. But today, I'm gonna have my first Florida cave dive. This is Jug Hole at Ikatuckney Springs State Park. Above water, it just looks like a little pond. But underwater, nestled within a ring of eelgrass, there's a hole going straight down into the earth. In this part of Florida, the soil is thin over a base of limestone created by ancient coral reefs. But over millions of years, rainwater has eaten away at the limestone, creating a kind of Swiss cheese called karst. It's full of caves, which are full of water. In places, the water flows out of the ground in springs that form surface rivers and streams. That's exactly what Jug Hole is, a spring. I begin my day at Amigos Dive Center in Fort White with owner Wayne Kennard, my guide to diving North Florida. Wayne's shop is smack dab in the middle of Florida cave country. We load tanks and gear and hit the road for a short drive to an amazing place. Soon we arrive at Ikatuckney Springs State Park, which has no less than seven springs that together feed the Ikatuckney River. After a short walk, lugging gear in a cart, we reach Blue Hole Spring, known to the locals as Jug Hole, one of the largest of the springs. It flows at between 40 and 60 million gallons a day, which is enough to fill two swimming pools every minute. We suit up with side mount cave diving gear and prepare to explore Jug Hole. And as soon as we're ready, Todd's camera malfunctions. After I sealed it and everything was working then. Underwater cameras are notoriously finicky and they always pick inconvenient moments to act up. With the camera sorted out, we head underwater with Wayne leading the way. Water is gushing out of the spring. It blows us back with such force that we need to fight to get down into the entrance of the cave.
Once through the narrow opening, we enter a large cavern zone that opens up like a jug inside, which is where the spring gets its name. At the bottom of the jug, the cave leads down at an angle. Wayne ties a guideline and leads the way. I follow behind with my big camera, fighting just to make forward progress against the strong current. Most well-visited caves like this one have a warning sign to remind divers who aren't cave trained to stay out. I push past the warning sign, leaving the cavern zone where you can still see light from the opening. Soon we arrive at a wide but very low section of cave. It barely looks like anyone can fit in there, but Wayne squeezes right in. As I push in behind him, I realize that my camera is almost too large to fit. This wide but low section of cave is called the bedding plane. There was a layer of softer rock in this space, but it was dissolved away by the water, leaving the harder rock on the ceiling and the floor. The current through here is very strong. Cameraman Todd and I have to claw our way forward. It's not a place for the claustrophobic, and it's also not an easy place to work a camera. On the far side of the bedding plane, we come out into a larger chamber, and since there's more space, the current is lower. In many caves, the sandy bottom in this chamber would be a big hazard, but in this cave, any silt we kick up is carried away immediately. At the far end of the big chamber, just as I'm getting used to the gentle current, we reach a tiny restriction. This cave is famous for this restriction. If you can't get through, this is as far as you can go. Wayne shows me the right body angle to get through, and he goes first to demonstrate. Most back mount divers have to take their scuba tanks off to get through here, but with side mount, we can squeeze through. Again, my camera is so big that I'm more concerned about banging in on the rocks than I am about getting through the restriction. The current through this tiny restriction is so powerful that I have to pull myself through. My fins are useless. Two swimming pools a minute are flowing through this restriction. I'm like a salmon fighting my way up the rapids. As we work our way deeper into the cave, we're now about 100 feet deep and 400 feet into the cave. The passages are getting smaller. find a bone on the cave floor, most likely dating back to a time during the last ice age, perhaps 15,000 years ago, when this cave was dry and animals could walk in here. Soon we reach the end of the line, literally, 550 feet from the entrance. This is as far as divers can fit in this cave. We go around a corner into a section of the cave with no flow. 
In here, the water is stagnant and murky. Time to turn around and head back out. But things are a little different on the way out. Now we're going with the current. You might think that makes it easier since we don't have to fight the current. But now we have two different problems. First, the current is trying to throw us into the rocks and push us through restrictions from behind. Second, if we kick up silt, it travels downstream with us instead of being whooshed away downstream while we swim upstream. When we get back to the restriction, Todd and Wayne head through first. I squeeze through with the water pushing me hard from behind. Back at the bedding plane, we stop for some pictures with underwater photographer Gene Page. Finally, we head back out into the cavern zone to decompress. While I'm decompressing, I have time to think about this dive and compare it to other caves I've visited. In the Bahamas and the Yucatan, the caves tend to have a lot of fragile formations, almost no current, and salt water under the freshwater. The caves in Florida tend to be all freshwater, often with strong water flow, and very little in the way of ornamentation. It's a different kind of cave diving. You don't have to be as concerned about breaking fragile formations, but you do have to fight the current. No matter what kind of caves I'm diving into, cave diving is an exhilarating sport that satisfies my urge to explore the unknown. And with the caves of Florida so close and convenient, I'll definitely be back to Wayne's shop for more cave diving soon.